At this point, we'll now learn a technique that will be necessary for designing controllers. That is, we need to learn how to reduce block diagrams. So looking at this system, we have a negative feedback system with different components, G and H, and, a, and, a certain, and they're connected in a certain way. And so ultimately, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to design our controller so that the complete system has a certain behavior. That is, we want the poles of the complete system to be such that we get the settle time we want, the overshoot we want, etc. In order to do that, in order to determine the poles of this full system, we basically want to be able to reduce the block diagram into a single transfer function with a single input, R in this case, and a single output, Y in this case. It turns out that this block diagram reduces into this form. And so the transfer function y divided by r is equal to this. And so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to do that reduction. The first approach that we're going to learn is something called block diagram algebra. And so here again, we have this negative feedback system, as was shown on the previous slide. And we want to derive that reduction. We want to derive the transfer function of an input of r and an output of y. And so the first step in this approach is to define a variable after each summing point. Here we have a summing point. We're going to go ahead and call that signal coming out of the summing junction E for error because it's the difference between the commanded reference and sort of the measured output. The next thing that we do is that we write equations for the block diagram. So looking at y, we can see that y is the output of this transfer function g, and outputs are always equal to the transfer function times the input, so y is equal to g times e. This is a branching point, and so this signal, um, y, when it branches off, is still equal to y. It goes through another transfer function h, where the output of that transfer function again is the transfer function times the input. E is the output of the summing junction, where R is on a positive input and HY is on the negative input, so we subtract it from R. Summarizing those there, Y is equal to G times E, E is equal to R minus HY. These equations capture this entire block diagram. And so what we then want to do is we want to simplify this. We want to rearrange it into the form output over input, where the output is y and the input is r. Looking at this, um, we want to eliminate any signals that aren't either the input or the output. So y is the output, so it can stay. r is the input, so it can stay. But e is a signal, which is neither the input nor the output so we want to be able to eliminate it. G and H are sort of characteristics of the system, so they can stay. Looking at these two equations, think about how we might eliminate E. Think about how we might start to move in the direction of getting everything in terms of only the input signal and the output signal. What we can do is we can combine these two equations by taking the second equation, the expression for E, and substituting it into the first equation. And that gives us a single equation without E of S. We can then continue our manipulation in order to get it into the form output over input. So we can distribute the G to get that Y is equal to G times R minus G times H times Y. We then want to go ahead and collect all of the y terms on one side and all of the r terms on the other side. So we can take this term with a y in it and add it to the other side and factor out the y. So we'll factor out a y from this term, we're left with 1. We factor out a y out of this term, we're left with g times h. Then we can 
go ahead and take one more step, divide r to the left hand side to get y divided by r. Take this quantity, divide it to the right hand side, and we get our transfer function y divided by r. And you'll notice that this is the same form that we had on the previous slide. This sort of approach to block diagram algebra can be applied to, to any block diagram. It just the more complicated the diagram, the more algebra that needs to be performed. A second approach to reduction is basically to memorize rules for standard arrangements. So for example, that negative feedback structure that we had on the previous slide is very common in control systems. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to memorize that result and not derive it every time. So looking back to the previous slide, we want to reduce this and get a transfer function for an input, in this case A, and an output, in this case B. Looking on the previous slide, um, you might be able to, to figure out what the reduction is. It turns out that it has this form. And the way that I remember this is I consider the, the reduction of a negative feedback loop to be forward divided by one plus loop. So our input is A and our output is B. So if you follow the forward path from our input to our output, the only thing in our forward path is G1. So that becomes our numerator. That's the forward. Then we have one plus loop. And so the loop in this case is that. And the loop consists of G1 in series with G2. So G1 and G2 are in the loop. And so that product becomes our loop. This is something that I'll repeat often throughout the course. And it'll really, it'll just become sort of ingrained in your, in your mind. Let's think of a slightly different structure. So instead of a negative feedback loop, we have a positive feedback loop. So what would the result be if instead of being the feedback being subtracted from the input from the reference, we added the feedback signal? So going back one slide, think about how it would be different, how the rule would be different if this negative was instead of positive. So if this was a positive instead of a negative, in essence, we'd have r plus hy. So this would become plus, this would become plus, plus. When we move it to the left-hand side, it would become a, a negative sign. And so in essence, we have the exact same structure. Instead of having a positive sign here, we have a negative sign. So in summary, the rule for negative feedback is that it reduces to forward over one plus loop. And if we have positive feedback, it's very similar, but instead it's forward over one minus loop. Positive feedback isn't something that we often implement on purpose, but it, it does uh, sort of occur naturally in, in some systems. So we do see, see it periodically. Another common arrangement that we'll see in block diagrams is to have two systems in series. So looking at this, um, A is the input to our first component. The output of that is simply the transfer function times the input. That signal is then input into a second component, where again, the output is equal to the transfer function times the input. So the transfer function is G2. Its input is A times G1. And we want to replace those two blocks in series by an equivalent transfer function. So in essence, if I put in A to the system and I get out B, what is the equivalent transfer function inside the dash box? So if B is the output and A is the input, the output is always equal to the input times the transfer function. So this must be the transfer function of the combined system. Therefore, 
if you have components in series, transfer functions in series, their transfer functions simply multiply. And this is something that we've alluded to previously in the course. Another common structure is to have two, two components in parallel. So in this case, we have an input signal A. It branches such that the signal into each of those two blocks are both A. The output of the first block will be simply the transfer function times the input. The output of the second block, again, will simply be the input times the transfer function. Here we have a summing junction where those two signals are added, and so B is equal to A times G1 plus A times G2. If we want to reduce this structure into a single transfer function, we can think of our output B as being the input A times the sum of G1 and G2, where we simply factored out the A from these two terms. And so in order to match our understanding of the output being the input times the transfer function, we can see that the transfer function is simply the sum of the two components. So to summarize, when we have blocks in series, they multiply. When we have transfer functions in parallel, they sum. If this summing junction instead had negative signs, then we could simply change the sign on G1 and G2. Sometimes there can be a little bit of confusion um, in that this structure can sometimes look similar to a negative feedback loop or a positive feedback loop. But the distinction is, in this case, both paths are going in the same direction. So the signal through the first component and the signal through the second component are both going forward. Similarly, they could go both be going backwards. But with feedback, one path is going forward and one path is going backward. So that's how you distinguish between the two.